Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about uh, some of the important monsoon diseases that is infections, especially so common infections like malaria and dengue fever, which are more prevalent during the rainy season. So as all of us are aware, both the malaria as well as the dengue fever are mosquito borne diseases. So the malaria is caused by plasmodium species, which has got uh, more different types of species, plasmodium falciform, vivax, ovale and plasmodium malariae. All these things are caused by female mosquito bite that is female anaphylis mosquito and most of the time these mosquitoes are usually like we can see in the evening times usually they bite towards the evening times and the other side we have one more uh, commonest disease again very dangerous one of the dangerous kind of diseases that is a dengue fever which is caused by dengue virus and is, is by the bite of the Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus mosqu mosquitoes and uh, the Aedes aegypti is also called as a uh, tiger mosquito because it has got a stripes on its body that is how we can differentiate between an anopheles and a uh, it is mosquito and uh, because of its uh, the zebra stripes are uh, most common and uh, these things are most of the time the bites we can see in the day times and usually it is a single mosquito that goes around and causes the bite and causes the dengue fever now if we identify these conditions in the early stage we can treat we can prevent the complications when we talk about uh, the symptoms of malaria, we, most of the time what we see is a sudden onset severe fever with chills and triggers, which is more characteristic, which we don't come across in other diseases where the fever is more prevalent than the rigor chills and rigors. Malaria is characterized by fever with chills and rigors, and it can be sharp rise along with along with a headache, vomiting we can have. And the other side, we have a dengue fever where they can have a sudden onset high temperature with a severe body pain and vomiting and also the pain behind the eyeballs which is more characteristic. Clinically, we need to differentiate between the malaria and dengue. One of the things is basically by the symptoms that is the sudden onset fever with the chills and rigors which is more characteristic of a malaria and that uh, sometimes some people do experience something called as an intermittent fever that is once in a day or twice in a day they can experience the fever whereas in case of a dengue most of the time we can fi find a high grade fever but not uh, so much of uh, rigors or uh, shivering but uh, they'll have a more severe body pain along with a headache vomiting and eye pain which is the most characteristic the malaria as well as the dengue needs to be identified at the earliest possible because both can be treated if it is identified in the beginning of the stages itself and uh, malaria we need some tests, certain tests are there that we need to do it and dengue also has got certain tests and uh, malaria we have got a smear also a smear test we do along with that we have got an antigen test that is to be done by the hospital setup or a diagnostic setup whereas for the dengue we have uh, the there is something called as a ns1 antigen which can be identified on day one to day three and uh, day three onwards usually there is something called as a igm antibody that can be identified it is better if the patient can uh, reach the doctor or contact the doctor at the earliest so with the, once the symptoms are developed before developing with the complications about the treatment part malaria has got a particular specific medications which can completely cure the malarial condition so like uh, we have got a chloroquine we have got artemisinin in uh, derivatives we have got quinine we have got doxycycline so we have got so many varieties of the medications that can completely cure the condition if we start the treatment at the right time. So if we delay, the chances of complications are going to be much more. And when it comes to the dengue, again, we don't have a specific antiviral medications or a specific medication for the dengue fever. So here it is going to be only supportive. Initially, the hydration has to be maintained along with the supportive care for the fever, body pain, we need to give the medication. So these things initially, we, though we try it at home, sometimes it requires a hospitalization and the IV fluids. So where the, the role of the hospital doctor and the other supportive staff is going to be more important. So the, it is going to be more of a supportive treatment than the specific treatment. So both the malaria as well as the dengue are preventable diseases. Certain precautions as an individual we can take is, one is wearing a long sleeves and using mosquito nets while sleeping are the better choices. Both malaria as well as the dengue, if not treated properly at the right time, will have a lot of complications. Malaria can cause uh, multiple problems like uh, there is something called as hemolysis which reduces the hemoglobin level or also called as a 
anemia which is we call it in the medical terms as a hemolytic anemia at the same time it can affect the brain which is called as a cerebral malaria and also leads to the death of the patient at the other, the other side we have a dengue fever though initially it start with a mild fever with a body aches if not treated if not intervened in the beginning it can cause the, the blood loss rashes blood loss and also there is something called as a serious condition called as a dengue hemorrhagic syndrome dengue shock syndrome where it can be fatal so during the monsoon season what we can expect is there will be water collection everywhere there will be stagnation of water and there will be a problems in the waste uh, disposal management all these things will increase the risk of the breeding of the mosquitoes which in turn increases the risk of malaria as well as the dengue fever so as a I mean, as a citizen or as a community we need to take care that uh, we need to see that uh, the waste disposal is proper and prevent the stagnation of the water so uh, mosquito breeding will be prevented so here one thing we have to keep in mind instead of uh, self medication it is always to have a consultation with a doctor take a proper medication make a proper diagnosis first then what is to be done has to be decided instead of uh, going for a self medication and landing up with the uh, complications so i uh, take an advice from the doctors then start with the uh, medications by understanding the uh, about the diseases both the malaria and the dengue so and uh, having a proper information we can uh, take proper measures to prevent the diseases and whenever there is a symptoms it is better we consult a doctor take proper steps to prevent the complications thank you for uh, listening and uh, stay safe stay healthy